Hey, hey, what's going on, everybody? It's You Know Who. It's Steven Pierce dropping in on you real quick. Wanted to share my pet goat with you. <laughs> I know it's kind of weird, right? But obviously, pet goat is an acronym. But here, here, here's the thing, right? If you're interested in being more productive and making more progress at whatever it is you're doing, maybe you'll find some value out of what I call my pet goat, which is basically an acronym that lays out how I go about making progress and being productive. Like it kind of simplifies it in my mind. So uh, hey, listen, if you're looking to be more productive and you're looking for some ideas on how you can be more productive, stick around, watch this video. You may find it to be useful. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch, bring up my little board here so I can break it down for you. First thing we want to start with is our pet. Again, this is an acronym. And the pet is really the foundation for all performance, regardless of what it is you're doing. It could be military, it can be business, it can be athletics, it can be politics. This is the deal. This is the very foundation. It's three things. Planning, executing, and tracking. That's it. Everything starts with the plan. And it amazes me how many people, especially entrepreneurs, say they want to build great businesses, but they have no documented plan. Right. Even for those of you that love the scriptures, it says, write the vision and make it plain, write it and make it plain so that those that what read it can run with it. Right. But people don't start with the plan. They have an idea, but an idea isn't a plan. Right. Or they're inspired. Inspiration is not documentation. It takes a level of maturity and discipline to take what it is you have as an idea or something that you're inspired to do and document it and create a plan. Now listen, that original plan may not be the final plan, but it gives you a starting point because when you get to the second part, execution, how can you optimize your execution and how can you execute at your best if you don't even have a plan that you're executing off of? Now all of a sudden is random, haphazard, sporadic type of execution, which is hardly gonna produce the best results. And we know that execution and everything, Execution is everything. But guess what? If execution is everything, where does the plan come in at? They're really one and the same, right? If, if you think about sports, think about, think, think about the football team that's going on the field running plays. All those plays are plans, right? Nobody takes the field or takes the court and they say, hey, man, what, what are we going to do? They just say, run. <laughs> that, that's not a plan. That's not a play. Listen, we need to understand what plays we're running every day in our life. We need to understand what the plan is going to be. Now, is it going to be a perfect plan? Probably not. Is it going to be the plan that works the first time we use it? Probably not. But it gives us a point to start executing from. All of this stuff that's in your head, that's laziness, man. You have to get that stuff out of your head and get it documented. In fact, I document like everything. And this is not, this is, this is, this isn't even 1% of the number of books that I have that I document everything. And it's, and it's not just documenting my plans. It's different ideas, outlining systems and processes for myself or for clients. It's just getting the stuff out of your head and then going back and being able to look at it and rework it. And then formulating, okay, this is the plan. Now, how are we going to execute that plan? What are you executing? Right. You start to waste a lot of your resources. You waste money, you waste time, you waste energy when you're executing something and you don't have a clear plan to execute off of. And then it comes to the tracking. Right. Why is tracking important? Because tracking is that feedback that lets us know how well we're executing and how well the plan is. Because if you don't know how well you're doing, you don't know what to do less of, what to do more of, what to add, what to subtract, what to continue, what to discontinue, what's working, what's not working. Tracking is important. Here, check this out. The one thing every professional athlete has in common, pick your sport, hockey, basketball, baseball, soccer, you pick it, tennis, team sports, individual sports, you name it. The one thing that every single person has in common is what? In terms of athletes. They understand and know their numbers. They know their numbers, right? They understand what their shooting percentage is. They understand how many rebounds they have, how many assists they have. 
right? Hey, think about a basketball game where it's come down to like the last 10 seconds. It's like everything is on the line. And let's just say, you know, the team that has the ball is down by one point. So all they really need to do is just, boom, they don't even need to hit a three-pointer, right? Sorry about that, y'all. You know, I got all my stuff going on right now. I'm not turning this stuff off. And I ain't starting this video again. Let's roll with it. Hey, check it out. So when, when you're inbounding the ball, right, and you got like a few seconds left, what are you going to do? What, what, what are you going to do? Who are you going to give it to, the best shooter or the worst shooter? You're going to give it to your best shooter. But how do you know who the best shooter on the floor is? The stats tell you who the best shooter on the floor is, right? Right. Hey, how, how do you know which guy not or girl, which guy or girl not to foul and send to the free send to the free throw line? The one that has the best free throw percentage. But how do you know that? You know the numbers. Numbers are everything. What if you're into betting or gambling? Maybe that, maybe that's your thing or you're betting on a game. How do you go? How are you going to know if you win or not if nobody's keeping score? Right. Here's the thing about tracking. Tracking keeps everybody honest. Because you can have a day that's like, hey, hey, man, how did you do today? Man, I felt like I had an awesome day. Okay, I understand how you feel, but let's take a look at the numbers. Because the numbers cut through all the emotion. The numbers cut through all the, the dialogue and it cuts, cuts through all the conversation and it lets us know how well we're doing. If you have two teams on the football field or on the basketball court, hey, how did we do? Let's look at the scoreboard. The scoreboard is going to tell us ultimately, not about your effort, because every team that's competing, they're putting in their absolute best effort, or at least they should. But at the end of the day, did we win or did we lose? When it comes to the scoreboard, hey, we may feel as if we won because, hey, we did the best we could, and you probably did. But are you going to get a W or are you going to get an L in terms of how the game is scored, who wins and who loses? I love numbers. I love tracking because it keeps me honest and it keeps you honest, right? Other, uh, otherwise, we're in our feelings. You can say, man, I don't feel like I had a great day today. But then you look at your numbers and be like, dude, I killed it. Oh, you kidding me, man? I killed it today. Listen, planning, executing, and tracking is the foundation for high performance in everything. And it doesn't matter what planner you use, what system of productivity you use, there's a ton of them out there. You can go to workshops. You can go to, you can get digital courses. You can get manuals. You can get books. Every single one of them are going to be telling you the same thing in different ways. But at the end of the day, it all comes back to these three things, planning it, executing it, and tracking it. If you're not doing that and you're a business owner, you got to kind of get it together because that shows a lack of maturity in business. And if you don't have the discipline to be able to sit down and get the ideas out of your head, that shows a lack of maturity. You can't be in such a rush. Oh, I'm too busy to document it. No, never be too busy to document what's important, especially if you're going to have a team of people around you that are supposed to be helping you document how this thing is supposed to go. And again, it's not that the plan is going to be perfect, but it gives you a point to start to execute from. And then once you have that plan and you're executing on that plan, you now keep everybody involved honest by tracking how everybody is doing. And if it's just you, then listen, hey, you're your coach and you're your accountability partner, and you're the main thing. You're the main woman. You're the main man that has to get the deal done. So what you want to do is you want to make sure you have your whole thing planned out, right? And you want to make sure that you're executing and you're tracking yourself. Now, obviously, in a world that is hyper-connected, you can find another entrepreneur or another person who's looking to lose weight to help you in terms of planning out how everything is going to go, executing with you or keeping you honest with your executing execution and then reporting your numbers to them in terms of tracking right oh by the way y'all see i'm rocking i don't know if you can see that or not i'm rocking the uh strength training shirt yeah we got hey listen i didn't forget about that man that's coming all right so now let's talk about your goat so that's the first part the pet part now we're going to get to the goat right because what this whole thing is is a pet goat all right so your goat you got your g o a t we got your goat let me just look over here and make sure i'm getting everything all right, so what's this all about? So we talked about planning, executing, and tracking. The GOAT part really helps us with the planning, right? So it looks something like this, right? You'll have your, when it comes down to the goals, you'll have like your 90-day goal, right? And I like to do them in, in, in like 90-day increments, right? So you're going to end up having a 90-day goal. And then from there, you can go and you can look and you can have, because that 90 days can be split up in what, three months, 
like every 30 days, you're going to end up having your 30 day objectives, right? Your 30 day O's. You're going to have your 30 day objectives. So, for example, let's just say to keep the numbers simple and easy to work with, let's just say you want to lose 30 pounds in 90 days, right? Definitely doable. So your, the goal is to lose the 30 pounds in 90 days. So you may look and say, okay, so every 30 days, my objective is to make sure I'm losing 10 pounds, right? So now we know what our goal is. So now we can pull our focus back a little bit and then just start focusing on the objectives because if we hit the objective, we're going to hit the goal. So we move from that big picture of losing the 90 pounds in 30 days, and now we start to focus on losing the 10 pounds, hitting that 10-pound objective every 30 days or every month, right? So now we, get, we start to get into what our tasks are, right? So the task, that comes down to your weeks, Right. And you're typically going to have your your four weeks. And by the way, this 30 days right here is in, is right over here with the 90 days, because when you hit your last 30 day goal, that's ultimately over at the 90 days. OK, so you kind of get the point with this with this chart. Now, here's the thing. You have your goal, the main thing that you want to accomplish. You have the objective. Now there are going to be activities that you're going to be engaged in on a weekly basis. So the thing is, is what are those weekly activities? So, again, sticking with the weight loss, let's just say. Hey, listen, um, every week I'm going to go to the gym five days a week, three days at, at, while I'm at the gym, I'm going to be doing strength training, I'm going to be doing weightlifting, and then maybe two of those days I'm going to be doing cardio, like interval training or Tabata running or, or something like that, right? Um, high intensity um, interval training, hit cardio or something like that, right? So if that's going to be the activities that you engage in on a weekly basis in terms of the exercise, you make sure that you document that, right? And then it comes down to the nutrition. So what is the nutrition supposed to look like? You know, what is the what kind of calorie deficit do you need to be in on a weekly basis? So what you're doing is you're looking at, hey, these are the weekly activities I need to make sure that I'm engaged in if I want to make sure that I lose that 10 pounds in 30 days. Because if I lose that 10 pounds in 30 days, I'm getting closer to losing that 90, uh, the 30 pounds in 90 days. Right. And now we come back down to the, the, the last thing. And this is what we really, really focus on. Right. And this is the daily task. So seven or six days, depending on how often you work in between. We have our seven. I work six days a week. You may work seven. Some of y'all may work eight. If you're pulling that off, let me know how you're doing that. But I work six days a week. Right. So now you have your daily task. Right. So let's go back to the weight loss thing. So maybe one of the daily tasks is you're using my fitness pal. So you're recording your calories, your fats, your proteins and your carbohydrate intake. And maybe you're supposed to be at a 500 calorie deficit every single day. Right. Because we know thirty five hundred calories equals like a pound. So, again, but it's going to be different for men, different for women. You know how how much weight you you, you have on your body and all this other kind of stuff. But just t speaking in general terms. One of your daily tasks may be making sure you're recording everything that it is you're eating, which, by the way, my fitness pal is pretty easy to use because you can scan barcodes of food and it's going to drop the numbers in there or you can search the database. Right. Another thing may be you're doing inter um, intermittent fasting, which is what I do. My last middle of the day is typically around 11, 1130 a.m. And I don't eat again until the next morning after my um, my workout. My post workout meal is my first meal of the day. My last meal of the day is like 1130. I do break my fast after 16 hours. It's a small break of the fast. And it's with my BCAAs, which is a part of my, my pre-workout. But if you're doing intermittent fasting, then that's going to be on your thing also. So a part of your daily task is knowing the window of time that you're going to ultimately be eating. And then, obviously, when that day comes around that you're going to the gym, what are you, what are you going to be doing in the gym? Are you doing squats, bench press, right, in terms of big muscles, little muscles, isolation exercises? I mean, what are you doing? Are you lifting heavy? Are you lifting light? Are you doing high reps, low reps? Are you doing pyramids? Whatever the details are for that particular day when you go to the gym, that's what it is you want to be documenting. Now, if you take that and you go back to the pet, right, plan, execute, and track, if all I do is I, I know what my 90-day goal is, I know what my 30-day objectives are, I know what the weekly activities are that I'm supposed to be engaging in, and I know what my daily tasks are. If all I'm doing is executing the daily task and tracking that, that's all I'm focusing on. It's my daily task and tracking that. 
And if I'm hitting my daily task, guess what I'm going to ultimately, ultimately hit? I'm going to be hitting what? Consistency with my weekly activities. Then if I'm being consistent with my weekly activities, I'm going to hit that monthly objective. And if I hit that monthly objective consistently across those three periods, those three 30-day periods, then come that 90 days, that 90-day goal is not down, right? I hope this wasn't complicated. I hope you understand what it is I'm talking about. The pet goat is really simple. The foundation is planning, executing, and tracking. And for me, I simplify the planning with the goat. What are, the, what are my 90-day goals? What are my 30-day uh, objectives in terms of splitting it up? What are the weekly activities I need to be engaged in? And then what are my daily tasks? That's it. Documenting everything. Remember, inspiration is not documentation. Just because you have an idea, you need to be able to flush that idea out. And that's really important because at the end of the day, guess what? You can have your goals. How many goals do we have that we don't really pursue? Right? Look, execution is everything. But then it's like, oh, the plan is everything. Oh, the tracking is everything. Guess what? They all work together in unison. A plan unexecuted is a plan that might as well not exist. Right. Planning and executing without tracking. Listen, you're 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 in the cosmos. You have no idea what's working, and what's not working. And you certainly can't go by your feelings. Oh, man, I feel like we did a great job. Really? Show me the numbers. Right. Let's 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 keep ourselves honest by looking at what the numbers say. That's it. You ever been stopped by the police? And it's like police says, hey, man, I clocked you at going 80. Oh, I didn't feel like I was going that fast. Hey, it didn't matter how you felt, man. You was going 80 miles an hour. Right. The, 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 the radar said 80. Your feeling said, dude, I, I was going 65. Doesn't matter how you feel. Keep yourself honest. Keep the people you work with honest. Hold everybody's feet and your feet to the fire with the numbers so you can know how well you're executing and how well the plan is. And then by understanding that, you can make all the necessary changes to the plan as well as to the execution. Hey, listen, man, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you get some benefit out of it. Talk back to me. Let me know. And uh, I'll see you next time.